Raise your hands. Raise your hands. Raise your hands. And wherever you are, the Spirit of the Lord is in this place. And something is ready to take place. It doesn't matter what you look like, where you come from. As long as you know there is a God in heaven. And the same God that you served yesterday and did wonders for you is ready to do it today. If you can lift your voice and say, he will do it this time. Because of the last time. He will do it this time. Because of the last time. Shout Jesus wherever you are. Listen, where, there is, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. In other words, there is freedom. Are you ready? Let's open our Bibles in the book of Daniel. The book of Daniel. And I didn't say sit down. Some of you are here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Verse number four of Daniel, chapter number twelve. Verse number four. You look wonderful. Oh, they, they, ooh, ooh, was. Uh, Seeing someone out there knows they don't look wonderful. Like, mm. <laughs> but thou, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book. Even to the time of the end, many shall run to and fro. There will be trouble everywhere. And look at what this Bible says. It says knowledge shall be increased. Notice the Bible did not say knowledge shall increase. Shall be increased. You can take your seats. Amen. Are you still here? The idea that we can come up with a subject like this. And that the Lord would lead us to speak about this. More than any other place I have seen. Talking about events of the end. Notice the scripture does not say a knowledge shall increase. It shall be increased. In other words, the knowledge is already here. But somebody is preventing the dissemination of the knowledge. Waiting for the end time where they can load it on us. Alright, you're not getting this. <laughs> when you had this brother, this Jewish brother called Zuckerberg. Saying my company is no longer called Facebook. It's now called Meta. In other words, Metaverse. What you did not hear is what I'm about to teach you today. And what your daughter, your son, your child will never agree to. Even after I minister this. You will never listen. The reason is at the end of the urge, knowledge shall be increased. That means you are a fulfillment of prophecy. Somebody under the influence of my voice. You see, we can talk about social media, talk about all these things that are taking place. And all you will hear is modern day things. They are not connected to the Bible. They are very much connected to the Bible. They are actually 10 rules Christians never listen to when they post on social media. You break 10 tenets of scripture when you post. Here it is. There is a universe out there. In days past, what we used to do was to read newspapers. In fact, way, way before us, it was to sit around the fireplace 
And an old and old and old, old great, great, great father or grandmother would say, once upon a time. And we would all listen. That took attention, our attention maybe by 10%, but our attention was actually, that, 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 that exercise was actually to grow our spirits into something and our knowledge into what is in life. It would be embedded with a lot of morals, those stories. Then we turned into newspapers, 20% of our attention was taken. Because not everybody likes reading newspapers. Then we got into books and then stories attended into books and we went in 30%. Then televisions took 70% of our attention. And now they've put the television on your mobile phone. No, you don't hear. So that we start on a very, very good note before I go where I need Let's to get go. to. Let's deal with this fact for a moment. Out of 70%, now social media is taking almost 90% of your time. The average person touches their phone on a daily basis 2,400 times. You check your phone. Sit around a group of people. They are already on their phone. Even while he's talking to you, they want to check what is happening. But my idea is for you to get to understand the connection or the correlation between what is happening and the end of days. I want you to look at this way. Look at this way. There is Zuckerberg. There are social media giants, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, uh, Snapchat, TikTok. All these, what they are doing is to take your attention from something. Now hear this. Hear this. Hear this and hear me clearly. Notice all of them have one thing in common. They are free. 100%. No, you just lost right there. Why do you make something this big free to us? What then is the catch? What is the product? Anytime things are for free, you are the product. No. They're missing it. Let me go here. Oh, yeah, yeah, you didn't hear me now. <laughs> see, no, I, I can see you didn't get this. So there is Zuckerberg selling something. And there are advertisers buying something from him. And the product is not seen. Because there is no reason for me to advertise my chicken on Facebook. Because I'm not advertising to Zuckerberg. Who am I advertising to? Why am I buying space on Facebook? And yet there is no product to buy. That means you are the product. Maybe some of you don't even get this. When you take cocaine and you're addicted to cocaine, your dopamine levels go up 400%, above 400%. When you look on your, at your phone like this, and you check at your, phone, your phone like this, trying to find a DM, a like, a heart. Do you understand how many levels your dopamine levels go to? 400%. Same with cocaine. You are already addicted, all of you. And the reason why you don't realize you are addicted is because you are addicted. The reason some of you are finding it so difficult to believe what I'm saying is because all addicts don't agree. <laughs> Alcoholic Anonymous says it this way. They have one rule. For us to help you accept you are addicted. Oh, I can see this. All, all these addicts are, are not with me today. Like, <laughs> Just, do you understand what these guys have done? You understand? One, the first executive, right? Executive president, rather, of Facebook said it this way. We knew what we were doing when we were creating it. There is a product called attention that they are buying. And what you don't realize is all these casinos around the world, they have one thing that they hire before they do, they build their casino or start their casino. It's called an attention engineer. 
And all the social media giants, when they wanted to start producing this product that you call social media, they invited, in, in other words, they actually employed attention engineers. So all they do is to get you to be addicted by getting your attention focused on one thing. Do you realize that uh, there is a photo that surfaced a few uh, months back, a few years back rather, where Zuckerberg is walking in his office uh, and they, they are computers and he tapped the cameras and the speakers. You didn't get it. You know when a drug addict doesn't get high on his own product. Most people don't realize that the moment you type a word in Google, it learns what you like. Most people don't realize you can try this at home. Just walk around in your house and say, I like tomatoes. Go back on the phone after a few hours. It will start showing you tomatoes. It was listening to you. Your, your, oh, you this gadget you have is spying on you. Just make, you know, do one thing. Check one lady who is dressed, not, you know, skimpy dressing. By noon, there will be 200 being shown to you. You even say, I never said this. I never, I, 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 I. What is really taking place is simple. They know your desires, your lusts. And they feed you with. The devil is so clever. It is the case I told you about what is called spiritual husbands today and spiritual wives. There's no such thing. It's nonsense. I know you are... This side, this side. This side is very difficult. <laughs> Way back it used to be this side, I think. But, but, but now this... Ah! Sit down. You can have people, old as old as whatever, as dinosaurs, having issues at night, wet dreams, everything, sleeping with people that they, they, they know. What's, every night is one face that comes. And you wonder what took place. What happened is you watch that thing for too long. It might be social media, you watch pornography for too long until the devil himself learns. That this is the kind of life you like. So when you sleep, he invades your thought life and brings out your desired in dreams. So you are doing exactly what you were doing in the afternoon. And you say, I have a spiritual wife, someone bewitched me. No, you bewitched yourself. So social media has understood that you have a problem in your brain. Do you understand that scientists have actually told us, have actually discovered fundamentally that there is a difference between how our brains work and how we are forcing them to work through social media? The brain works in doing a real job and then getting rewarded after working. Not these flimsy likes and hearts and, 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 and comments and likes and... People are committing suicide on social media. Committing suicide because of it. Now you know when somebody commits suicide, they check the social media to see what they were posting. Imagine you have envy based on something that is fake that is on social media. After you posted your own fake pictures and you saw someone's fake pictures that are better than your fake pictures. I'm about to finish. Because you're not, you're not here. I can tell you're not here. <laughs> if then I am the product, that means I am a slave. Don't cry about black slave trade. We are all slaves to these giants. They know what they are doing. Ask Trump how they changed the course of history by removing every comment. They even removed him before elections. 
So he wouldn't even appeal to his own supporters. And you're sitting there, you think it's nothing. That's why I said I'm going to take my time to preach something called Harris Bears. About music, social, music in the world. How it affects you without knowing it. How many times have you seen any scripture being given to you for free on social media? Like I just saw Jesus. Somebody who posted about Jesus. You have to keep searching it and searching it and searching it for them to even post you a preacher. Every time you touch your phone like this, it's proof of addiction. Every time you check DM, proof of addiction. You want to know. You want to know. Everyone who post wants to see how many likes. Do you know the joy you have when you see 700 likes? <laughs> the financial burden it carries. Wow. Wow. I have to buy the nicest clothes, the most expensive ones that I can't afford so that I can post and my friend will like it. I'll get all the angles that you know. Uh, and all the filters. I will download all the filters that just get my face to be. Mm, you, you, you understand? Then when we meet you, we say, well, uh, where is the other person? Mm, you are not hearing what I'm saying. The world has become so fake. Guess what? Guess what? Hey, do you remember those days when we would see people uh, with makeup, with 3D makeup, and would laugh at, at the comparison? Now, nowadays, people actually go on video and show their before face, which is ugly, and show their after, and say, look at me. Aye. We have gone too far now. We don't care. We are showing you this is what I look before my... Way back would hide. We didn't even want anybody to know that we actually have filters. So, you know, now they have an ability to delete your neighbor or your friend or your wife that you were standing with. They have an ability now. You can literally just go and go like this and zip. The person goes and you are now left on your own. You can even put the beach behind you. A place you have no money for. So nothing in you now pushes you to attain that life because you can fake it there. That's why you're broke. What you don't know is they put you in a certain metaverse. Maybe people don't even know why he put the word meta and he happens to be Hebrew. The word Hebrew means death. So he's not confused. He knows exactly what he's saying. He said metaverse. A universe of death. You are the one dying. You are zombies. You don't even know. You are going on social media like this. He knows you are a zombie. I need to attach this. I need to attach this one. Let me send a DM. Now, this is my story. How come your story has no money? But your story on social media has money. You post sexiness, you will find people who like sex. I don't know why I'm not getting married. Exactly, you're selling sex. You are a salesperson and they are coming to buy. And like I always say, three minutes of sexiness will lead you into three hours <laughs> and then 30 years of child support. <laughs> Let me talk to me, you, my people. Leave this place. <laughs> they have created a world for you. Sit down, sit down, sit down. What you don't realize is they've removed you from your world. 
Now you are in a certain world that doesn't exist but exists. People are having virtual girlfriends. You design your own girlfriend. Tell them how they need to walk. You can increase the length of their legs, the wideness of their hips. Uh, no surgery, nothing. This is just on the computer. <laughs> So what then gives you the power now to attain the life you need? Mm. Mm. Have you noticed that almost everyone, it seems as if this generation has beautiful people. <laughs> than the one we grew up. What has really taken place? Now we have filters. Now we have social media. So people make their face looks so nice so that they can post. What you don't know is after you wake up with the same person now in the morning they smell they have spots that they covered on social media oh uh. <laughs> hey! <laughs> what is really taking place? Who is creating these things? The devil knew. The Bible says, keep every thought captive to Christ. Put it in jail. Lock it up. Lock your conscience up in jail. That's what the Bible says. Social media has taken you off the real world. Pastors are now on social media. And what happens on social media there? Ah, they are exactly becoming like the world on social media. To attract the world. Yet they have already been attracted by the world. So what you are getting is a preacher who is in the world, in the world preaching to you about turning from the world Yet you, what you are bringing, what he is bringing you to is the same world. So I keep telling you, people hate you because you sin different from their sin. You're, you're not flowing with me. You're really not flowing with me. How on earth don't you know that you are actually addicted? How did it happen? Because your mind doesn't tell you. Your mind starts downplaying everything and says, it's okay. It's nothing. It's just social media. And what I post there is not harmful. If it wasn't harmful, why do you keep posting? It's nothing. It's just music. It's just worldly music. It's nothing. I don't get affected. If you don't get affected, why don't you stop listening to it? Since it has no effect. Why don't you stop posting just for one day, just like I'm not doing it? Two days, go. Seven months, just go, I'm not doing it. Science, in fact, scientists have actually proven that people who are on social media have more stress than people who are not there. And some of you are hearing me say, move from social media. No. Take advantage of this ad Addicted bastards. Give them Christ. We already know they are addicted. Let, them, let us give them another drug. The Bible says, be ye drunk in the spirit, brother. We give them what makes them drunk. Because the only power you have, listen to me, is if you want to change an addiction, you replace it with another addiction. And the gospel we have will make them addicted. Yeah. Sit down. Calculate the time you have taken just being on social media. 
Calculate what it takes to post. Sometimes you sit in front of a computer like this, trying to figure out what sort of philosophy to post. <laughs> have you seen that you have given people advice you actually need on social media? Don't listen to haters. And you are listening to haters. <laughs> Let me tell you good advice. If you want to succeed today, don't delete your social media. Just go and follow all the advice you were giving people. Amen. You'll be rich by noon. Hey. Focus on business. You have not one business you started in your life. Focus on business. <laughs> Jesus is my boss. You. I speak to somebody under the influence of my voice. Your addiction will end tonight. I said your addiction will end. What is the devil really trying to do? He's trying to get you hooked to a certain system. Yes, we make money on social media. Yes, we make money by crypto. Crypto trading, we make money. But crypto trading... This technology, this blockchain technology, is a demonic technology. Doesn't mean we're not making money, though. <laughs> what the devil realizes, this whole world is crumbling. People are beginning to notice these tricks. So he created another universe that we call metaverse. Why? Why change the name of Facebook and then you don't change the name of Facebook? Because spirits move by what? By sound waves. And he needed to produce the sound. And yet it's not changing. It's still Facebook. Do you understand that Facebook has been dying for a long time? It's Facebook. The young kids are now on TikTok, on Snapchat. And that's where the biggest sin is committed. Highest levels of sin. Two. Sit down. I can see you're not hearing me. Turn to someone and say, neighbor, are you still here? Are you still here? Are you still here? Zushemang grapatole go down. Now, I want you to see something. I want you to see something. These guys go to places like Las Vegas. And they are called attention engineers. They know what makes you to stay in one location until your attention is grabbed, consistently grabbed. That you keep rolling this and pulling the lever mm -hmm. for the 777 to line up. Why did they put the 777? Do you know how difficult it is to hit 777? What is the name of Jesus Christ? The name of the devil is 666. The name of Christ is 777. If you change it. And they know you are all certainness in this place. And for you to hit the real number of Christ, you can't. No, you're still not hearing this. You're still not following Now just imagine those attention engineers know if you keep doing this and the seven comes up and the banana comes up and another banana comes up, like, my God, I missed it, two sevens. If I had two sevens, if I had another banana, my God. You keep doing it and you keep doing it. Now, let's reverse what social media is trying to do. Let's go to what social media is trying to do. It's trying to say, after you leave Las Vegas, imagine you now have the power to take this machine home. You can pull the lever at any time you want. If you pose like this. If you go throw back. Somebody might just like, ah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You are a, an addicted person. How can you, how can you allow your children to put a throw back? Do you even know what they are trying to show the world? You think it's the skate? What is there? 
you are quiet. <laughs> Who do you think they want to see that is their sister? Their cousin. See how big my bum is. They're their cousin. There is a man they are trying to trap. Now just imagine you are trying to trap men to marry you and the men never marry prostitutes. Oh, you didn't hear me. Listen to me. If the boyfriend you have is not marrying you, you are a prostitute to him. And he knows you are a whore. That's the reason he leaves you. Men will always find somebody called a wife to marry and play with a whore. There is something on you that showed a sign of a prostitute. I need to leave this place now. I've got too many enemies at the back there. I said I have too many enemies at the back there. I can see. Especially that corner that nobody's saying hallelujah or amen or anything. It's just like what's happening here. Sit down. Don't blame that boyfriend of yours. No. He knows you are the one to play with. You are servicing him. When he needs sex, he comes to you. When he needs to touch a breast, he comes to you. When he needs to kiss somebody, he comes to you. But when he wants to marry somebody, he doesn't go on social media. He looks for the one, that sister that... Mm -hmm, uh, you didn't hear me. This is the reason why players marry good wives. <laughs> this area is really quiet. If you see your daughter kind of uh, throw back, hit the demon out of that person. Just take the person by the throat. Which throwback was this? <laughs> Jeez. Sit down. So for my daughters here, I'll go to the men later on. Listen to me. Men, men, real men are visual. They like visuals. If it's already there, they don't need it. Men like imagination. That if we lift that skirt up to there, hey, what will happen? If we put it up there, what will happen? Now it's now on social media up to here. A skirt that ends where it starts. Nobody likes that. There is nothing to visualize or imagine. Nothing, zero. It's all there. Every man is seeing it. What should I see on my own in the bedroom? Just everything is out. I think we need to st uh, skip to prophecy. Metaverse. The enemy is taking you into his own world without you knowing it. What is there to imagine? What should be left for me in the bedroom has already been shown everybody. Ray Ray knows what your thighs look like. Peter is well away. John has seen everything. Your backside, your front, your everything. Here I am thinking I'm marrying a wife and I get in the bedroom. I'm seeing the same thing that others have seen. You are just marrying a United Nations of a human being.
Sit down. Uh, Shout Metaverse. So, you know, Muhammad Ali, Muhammad Ali uh, saw his daughter and his daughter was, uh, was just walking down the, the corridor and Muhammad Ali looked at her and she had this skirt that ends where it starts. You know the skirt that looks like you just grabbed it before the tailor finished to... <laughs> just one belt, it's just like a belt. He called the daughter and said, do you know one thing, daughter? What you're wearing, let me tell you something. Muhammad Ali would speak so fast. He said, let me tell you something. God, there's one rule that he made on earth. Everything that is precious is hidden under. Go to the Arab world. If you want oil, if you want mining, you want gold, if you want diamonds, everything special is hidden. How is your bum open? How is everyone seeing it? How are your thighs up? Say, so you don't understand. You don't understand. Men give me so much attention. Yeah. House flies like poop. Sit down. Look at your neighbor. If they're angry, you know we hit the... We are hitting the... You, you can tell. Please, look again. Look again. If you know their face is going like... Mm, something is happening. Deliverance is taking place now. <laughs> Why can't you be special? Let this man that marries you once just say, yeah, now. You, you know when people are at a wedding and, and, and the man is facing that side waiting for the... And they turn and they see and they cry. Some crying is not for crying. Some people are just going, what have I gotten myself into? And your neighbor say metaverse. metaverse. You are being programmed. <laughs> sit down, sit down. And you men have seen too much of this online that you demand perfection from a woman. Because you have witnessed a woman that has airbrushed themselves every time. Now you want your wife to look the same. No, she can't look the same. Because what you see is not real, it's fake. These women are beautiful as they are. And... And we put too much pressure on our women to act like the horse we see on social media. Oh, I told you it was standing. You know, it was standing. The, the, the real thing about life is horse never act like the wives. Horse go a little bit further. They massage you better than your wife. Mm, I just said something. They kiss you better than your wife. They hug you better than your wife. Just a little bit longer so you... Oh, I'm talking now. I said I'm talking now. Metaverse. So the devil himself knows what you like. And it's a system. <laughs> Abraham. Go to Abraham. Isaac and Jacob. Do you know they had one thing in common? Married light-skinned women. 
It says it fair, 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 yellow bone. They were in there. It's like a generational case. There was something controlling their bloodline. From one man looking at a woman and saying, I like these ones that look like this. And then the second generation said, I will like women that look like this. And then the third generation said, We like women that look like this. To the extent that if you change what is happening in your family, the whole family says, you have married an ugly woman. Even if yours has got brilliant melanin, the idea is simple. The devil knows exactly what he is doing on social media. He's telling you us what beautiful women look like. So the slim ones that look like they're hungry, Are beautiful. The big ones, they are obese. So which one now? Which one do you like? Now it's the thick-lipped women that they say, now that's beautiful. Before you, everyone now runs so towards that they change. They say the slim ones are the best. Models used to be the thin ones suffering from anorexia. Even if you look at the names of demons, anorexia, gonorrhea, yeah. schizophrenia, yeah. ah. Yeah. When they see the slim ones and they say they are ugly, then they go to fat ones. They say these ones are ugly. They are obese. One, these people are the most athletic that they before you know it, two months down the line, they say, yeah, we now need to not do body shaming. Hmm? Right. You are the one who are doing it. We were just watching. watching. You are being controlled. Why do you think the television is called television programming? They are programming the television. You are being programmed. All you know right now, okay, how many have never been to America? Sit, sit down, sit down. How many have never been to America? You know, if you've never been to America, don't be ashamed. Servants. There's so many generals are here that have never been there. Okay, sit down. How many know America? Now just imagine, even the ones that have never been there have raised their hands. What if we are lying to you that it exists when it doesn't? That means somebody told you it exists and you believed it. But I saw photos. Yeah. We've even seen your own photos on social media. We can't recognize you. Do you understand that somebody is lying to you? And right now, after I say this, even after this part one of it, is this is only part one. I don't want to go deeper on other. But just imagine this part one we are talking about. Imagine this. Imagine this. It's only part one. Are you getting this? But do you know after I minister this, you will still be on your phone. I just want to see. Is there a like somewhere? Someone. Now, now you even have face recognition. So that you don't have any typing. You just go boom. Wow. Humanity is addicted to approval. This is a natural tendency. We like to be liked. Imagine the person who likes you, even if you click their name, you don't even know them. But you just feel like, ah, oh, it's really nice. People who even sit down and talk and say, I just, I'm getting too many likes now. Things are just, oh, things are just. And after you leave that place, have you seen families having dinner together? And everyone is on their phone. The mother, the father, the daughter, the sister, everyone is going. Nobody, in fact, it will be so shocking to you that they will be texting each other, right? <laughs> now look at that, look at that, look at mom, mom. Mm. 
They even a family group to discuss things that they can discuss. They live in the same house, but they'll be discussing on family group. <laughs> Our attention has been stolen. And one day it takes the devil to introduce something and everybody's dead. Why on earth would you lo live? You know that chip that they put in the, you know, now because they know people can fake vaccinations. So what happens now is they have created a chip to get into your body, right? And that chip, do you know what it's called? Yeah, it's called Lucifer's. No, 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 no. I think people back there just find Lucifer on the internet. It's not a theological name, please. It's not a preacher who said it's called Lucifer. It's a sci it's scientist. It's actually the people that are producing that vaccine that are telling you we have introduced something called Lucifer. Um, I don't need to be clever if something is a name of Lucifer. How on earth do you think it's okay to call it Lucifer? Call it something. The devil is no longer hiding anything. Call it something else. At least something. Why not call it rest? Lucifer is removed. Because he knows he controls you. How many of you were told Biden is the best guy? The man is forgetting every minute. He doesn't know what he said before. <laughs> he said, if you don't vote for me, you're not black. Huh? CNN supported him. This one is supporting him. Why? Because social media said, this is what you vote for. You don't vote for this one. It's now telling you what black people need. We've been products and we're being pro programmed to actually become even deeper, better products. You are addicted. I told you before that if I know you like money, but I'll give you money if from here to there you've never committed sin on social media. Please, don't embarrass yourself. You either have looked at a woman to lust after her. Yeah, the quiet, mm, the silence. <laughs> that phone you have is the most dangerous tool you have. Most dangerous. Because at the, at the click of a finger, you have committed a great sin. And you can't, you see, the nice thing about life is, internet doesn't forget One day your child will grow up, go to school, and his friends will have your mother's phone. Their mother's phone. This is your mother. Throw a bit. What was she doing here? Do you know so many people here can never be married to a president? Even if the president likes you, he knows there is a lot to clean up. Your past is dotted by a lot of moral decadence. You can't even see it. So for the person to put you forward, they say, there is my wife. You can't. Like, ish. <laughs> it will be in the papers every day. He did this, she did that, he did this. And politicians who like, you, have you seen politicians who, the, 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 the enemies of a politician will go into the past, research every mistake you have done. If there is proof, bring it back here. Yeah. As if I was campaigning for being for presidents way back. You are damaging your future. And the devil knows it. It's easily available. The apparatus to mess up your own life are easily available. And they are free. When you smoke, when you drink, there's a chemical called dopamine in your body that rises. Just imagine it is the same one that rises when you're on social media.
just looking at a woman on social media. Like, wow. These are cold women. <laughs> God's creation. That, is it. that alone is raising your addiction level to another level. Before you know it, you like this one. You like that one. You sleep with that one and sleep with this one and sleep with that one and sleep with that one until everybody and in sleeping with somebody there is something called soul tie. That means you are a product of everyone you slept with. That's why you're confused. How do I break it? You don't break it that way. You don't break it by a deliverance minister saying, out! No. No, 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 no. <laughs> there is no prayer meeting that removes the soul tie. Because the Bible says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. There is a certain renewal that your mind requires. It's not a deliverance meeting. You roll on the floor and you vomit. You wake up the same demon. And it is not removed by any amount of clothes or suit you wear. Or the such you buy, man. It's not removed by any kind of makeup. No. It's a soul tie. It is removed by the renewing of your mind. To actually look at a thing and say, I was addicted to this is wrong. But you will never get your addiction off until one day you decide, I need to see things the way they are. I am gone. Do you realize that it takes muscles to literally go on the phone like this. And every day, you're like, check it. Mm, mm, mm. What do I post now? Mm. Wow. And every time you're attracted to things that you don't even know where they came from, there, there are people that are actually changing the world we live in just by social media. You don't even vote for your president anymore. They vote for your president. Why? They've told you what the president should be like. They told you Trump was not presidential enough. As if being presidential is a birthright. You, you wake up from the kingdom of God through your mother's womb and you come out clothed with presidential powers. So they tell you what he's saying is not presidential enough. Yet he's the man standing there telling you the truth. With Trump, you would get exactly what he was thinking. With other presidents, you get what the person who wrote this speech is thinking. And some of you have one problem. They think we will never be influenced. As for me, no. I can never be influenced. Ah, I think for myself, you never. Even before social media, you are a product of your society. There are people thinking for you. You are a compilation of thoughts, ideas, values of your society. You're not your own. That's what the Bible says. You are not your own. The Bible wants you to belong to God so that your principles that you exude out here are the principles that God has given you. But no, you are exuding principles you saw on social media. Oh, after this you will not like me. Have you noticed that most social media sites don't have an age limit? If they have an age group, they say 13, but nobody's going to take your ID. You just say, I'm over. In this same country, you can't drive until you're 16, 17. They know this is dangerous for you. Cars will kill people. So they fixed it. They didn't start like this. They saw it. They allowed everyone to drive. And people were hitting people, dying on the road. And they said, no, 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 no. The age group that you drive is over 16. Why did they do it? They know you will kill people. Yet something that raises the dopamine level to levels of cocaine is free.
Yet cocaine is illegal. Social media raises by 400. Mm. You're not getting me. You're not getting this now. The reason is simple. They have discovered that this is the way to control humanity. Somebody is behind the scene engineering this. And the devil is fully baking it. And you see your daughter going on there and say, hey, it's all right. She doesn't go out. She's already out. <laughs> she has no boyfriend. Ah, she has dated 29 million in her mind right there. This one with the height I like. I like the six pack. Look at the bicep. Boom. You think it's just appreciating. No, it's lust. The problem with the lust and love, love gives, lust takes. And social media gives you opportunity to do, to do both. You can like a man because you like them, but they won't see it. So you've taken. So you're in lust and you think it's no more. I just like this type of car. Like. Like, wow, 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 nice car. It's envy. The sin of envy is taking shape. You think it's because it's a Ferrari, that's why you like it like this. You have to put a hat. Who arrests you if you don't put a hat? Who pays you if you put a hat? So what causes you to press the button? already been programmed. So you become a slave of what they like. And while it's their pocketing money, you're pocketing poverty because your attention has already been, been taken. If you notice what he said, he said we are competing for your attention. If you, you need to look at the names of these guys, what is written there. You can see that they had great jobs. Some of them are actually former, former Facebook executives. Some former Instagram executives. One of them was actually the president of Facebook before this whole thing. And he left. He said, we knew what we were doing. And you are the one arguing that, no, it's just social media. The one who created it said, no, I, I, I know what I was doing. I Went to Hell, written by Hubert Angel, the author of the bestseller, Spiritual Warfare. This book is an experiential account of the true nature and existence of hell. Prophet Hubert Angel was afforded visitations to hell by God and was commanded to let the world know the reality of hell and to give a stark reminder to the world to choose life and prepare for eternity. Get a copy of this sobering book, I Went to Hell, from www.hubertangel.org. metaverse. Simply meaning to say you are a zombie. You think you are thinking, but they are thinking for you. So you are just moving like a zombie. They say like this one. You like it. And they say, okay, now we have changed. You can actually be able to see the statistics. Now they are no longer entering on the likes to see how many likes you have. You can go to statistics and see in Lagos. It's the biggest city that they like me. They don't know this. Trust me. 
You can go to countries and say, this is the country that likes us the most. This is the town that likes me the most. You can go to statistics now. Now you know where you can do your hold in. You know Lagos likes you the best? Go to Lagos then. They know your areas. Parents here, never allow your child to have that kind of addiction. Monitor what they do on social media. I don't care, they tell you now, but, but you know, that's why we research stuff. Research what? There are many textbooks. Go into textbooks. The devil has captured this generation. And this generation is too blind to notice. We are no longer here thinking. We are thinking what people want us to think. We feel what they want us to feel. We see what they want us to see. We understand what they want us to understand. And we get into the way of things of God because we are so blinded by the enemy. There are people here with businesses that have hit million dollar levels. Don't raise your hand. I know them. Ask them when you have time. Ask them when you have time. Give me your social media. How many people are there? How many people are following? And when last did you post? You will be amazed. They might not even remember the time they posted. It's not because they don't want to post, but because they are too busy making money. You're too busy liking people. This is um, a scenario that they are creating to show you what happens behind the scenes. So they are talking about getting people to meet in different locations. You understand? That cute girl from school, let's get them this way. So when you like a man in this area, right? They know where you are by following you. So you go to a restaurant. They already know you are there. And they know you have been liking what? Men with this type of, you know, phys physical appearance. And they know one man with a physical appearance exactly like the one you like is also in the neighborhood. And they advertise that restaurant you are in to that person. So you are meeting and you ascribe it to God making you meet. I just met my, my, my boyfriend in, it was just the doing of the Lord. No, the doing of Facebook. God was not even part of it. We just made it at a club. That club you went to, you thought you went to, only, no, your friend that you liked has already been visited by Facebook and shown other clubs like that that they like. And then she invites you, then invites the boy you like. Boom. Romance is started. Before the night is over, you have already slept with that person. There is now a sore tie. To run away from him is no longer possible. To run away from here is no longer possible because the mind is connected. That's why it's the most difficult thing to dump someone. Have you noticed that your mother can be beaten by your father 29 million times and she never leaves? She'll even find reasons. I'm saying this for my kids. <laughs> Then the kids grow up and go. And they'll say, I'm, I'm staying here because of my grandchildren. <laughs> <laughs> Reasons will always be there for addicted people. And if I were you, remove all the notifications of Instagram, Facebook, remove them. You don't need them. It gets you addicted. You want to know so who has liked me now? Wow. 29 likes. 15 likes. So consistently, your addiction level is being rewarded by your own hand. But because it doesn't make you a junkie in the side of uh, losing your house or whatever it is, or you're walking in the street with a crazy hairdo. So you think it's not an addiction. But look at the pockets. Look at your money. Gone. See what they said? Say, have you ever wondered if it's good for them? They said, nah, doesn't matter. Because people are making money, they don't care. These are not your uncle, this is not your mother. 
who started Facebook. Instagram was only started by your cousin. These people might have good intentions when they started, but they didn't know they were being used by the devil. So the only way you can control social media is not to run away from it, but if you use it for the gospel. That's why I tell you, every social media platform you have, make it an altar call. Have you noticed? Even on my pages when these guys post, if they write something or they show my photo, just standing there and say something, God is about to give you money. 20,000 comments, 15,000 comments, all right? Facebook sometimes goes to 50,000, 4,000, 10,000 comments. Mm. Now hear this. If I post that I'm about to preach on deliverance on Sunday, it'll be 10 comments. That tells you what humanity is like. They are addicted to rewards. So the messages I have to preach have to link up with something like money tomorrow. People are like, What? We want to get money. You know this, I said the money is coming. Oh, the comments. I, I, I was expecting 10 comments is the service because God told me to preach it. But at the same time, when I said it, I said, oh my God. These people are addicted. They want money. To the extent that they, it doesn't appear to them like they needed money. They, they just sit down. Hear this. Imagine everyone you met, everyone who said hello, on social media. They had already seen your face somewhere. It's not an angle who told them. When you posted and when you liked something, algorithms took all that you did. And you know, you know, if you go on social media and press that search thing on your page and press that button that's like, it shows you pages, different pages. That is a result of what you searched before. It is likening your likes. Whatever you, you said you liked, it starts giving you those things, suggestions that if you like this, you might have liked, you might also like this one and this one and this one and this one and this one. In your head, I don't know where these pictures are coming from. They are coming from your own likes. Computers that are using intelligence, artificial intelligence, they have measured your likes and your lusts. And now they are rewarding you. I think you might like this one. And when you do that, that, your face is also appearing on someone's what? Search. When they say they like you, it's because you exuded something that they liked. But you don't understand. I was just looking for makeup. Exactly. They will look for the ones that know how to do makeup. All of them. And take your picture to the men that like people who do makeup like you. What do you think? Because makeup changes. The next time this man sees another person who has now known how to do their makeup better than you. Since they like makeup, not you. They go to that person. And every day, your whole clan is a divorce after divorce after divorce after divorce. Now you blame a demon. The reason why you don't have a business right now is business requires muscles. It requires time and concentration. It requires you removing all the attention from anything else ex except this. This is why, I mean, how I many people understand this? There are only one, watch this now. There are only one, there's only 1% 1 of the world's population that is rich. 1%. How many did I say? 1%. In fact, it's less than 1%, but we call it 1%. Now, imagine if it's least 1%. That means we have gays there that are in the 1%. We have lesbians there that are in the 1%. Right. That means your chances of getting married to a rich person will be 0 0.1. Rich people are not everywhere looking for you. Rich people are looking to marry rich people. Still not getting. If I can only, you know, by the spirit of God, get married to a rich guy. The rich guy is looking for a rich lady. 0 0.1, less than 0 0.1 chances of a rich person locating you and marrying you. I'm not talking about a person with a good salary. No, I'm talking rich. Big difference. 
Why is it that it's 1%? Yet the rules for making money are so simple. I'm telling you this. It's so simple. If a person takes you and takes you to, a, to his company and says, here, sit here, this is it. This is how you make money. You'll be like, ah, this is it. Say, no, 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 you're hiding something. I've taught people in Millionaire Academy how I'm making money. Guess what? Very few of them become millionaires. Not because I, I hid anything. No, I did not. But they don't have the tenacity, the bold of tenacity to follow through with those simple steps. Listen, prosperity is universal. Hear this. I said what? Prosperity is universal. Wherever you see consistency in finances coming up for one person, that person is following a set of rules that you have not followed. Every time you see results in one person's life, there is a law that they have followed. And they are constantly attacking that law. And all you need is not how to make money. You need to know what that law is. Have you followed it? No. We were going to, to Scotland one time. In fact, it was yesterday. We were sitting down with the team in London here. And we were getting into this um, cryptocurrency and putting this money there, putting this money there. And as we were sitting there, it went what? 2,000, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. That's like 300% from what it was that time. And I said something. I said, money is looking for other monies. I'm sitting here. I already have money, but it comes to me. It's not that I am cheating using prophecies to go to a crypto. No. But money will go when money is moved. There are rules of money. Money is not emotional. It's emotional. No, no, you didn't hear that. In other words, no matter how you cry for money, money will never come to you. You will look so sad in your house like, eh, if I had money. Money will never hear you. Money is so stubborn. You will cry if I had money. God, please, God, please. Money is like, starts running away from you even further. Money is not emotional. It doesn't come because you cry. And listen to this carefully. Money doesn't go to nice people. That's why drug dealers have it. The nicer you become, the more money runs away from you. It goes to people with bulldog tenacity. They grab a principle. They follow through with it. They go for it. They go for it. They go for it. They go for it. They keep going for it until it comes and they attack it again. But you, imagine the time you spend on social media if you spend on learning money, learning crypto. Learn, you see, it's a language. Let me tell you something. Money is a language. There is a book written a few years ago called How to Speak Money. People won't talk. They won't talk about profit came. They talk about revenue. They don't talk about how, this, how much are you left with. They talk about balance sheets. There's a difference. I'm just giving you just layman's terms nonsense. Just stupid things that people with money would even discuss. But if you meet two people, I remember one guy who has 600 houses. He came and said, oh, um, uh, for me to get here. I said, how did you get it? He said, he said um, uh, this brother uh, extended a facility to me. <laughs> to the facility. <laughs> what facility? He made a loan. And the guy's not saying a loan, saying facility. <laughs> Money is a language. When you see rich people sitting down like this talking about money, you think they're talking about some animal somewhere. Because the language is different. And you never have money until you learn the language. But for you to learn a new language at this grown-up stage you are in right now, it's very difficult. Do you know your child when he's in the womb or she's in the womb, she understands the differences in languages that you speak? Yeah. Semantics and syntax happen in the brain way before anybody comes out of the womb. They know this is French. They might not call it French. And this is English. It's different. They know it. And they can hear stuff. We had, a, we had a, a CD we would play. It was called Men of Standards. When my wife was pregnant with UJ. Guess what happened? UJ in the womb, right? And would play that every time. Play that every time. And when he came out, he would cry and cry and would play this song and play this. Never keep quiet until we put that CD. Listen, 
That means it was in the womb that he could understand that music. And it was okay in the womb as a song. Imagine how programmed you are by the things you hear, things you see, things you, even the best music that you have listened to recently. You saw it on Facebook. You saw it on Instagram. It might have been just a beat and you went for it. You don't even know what it means. The brain is already taking it. Now these guys are planning it before you consume it. You're no longer a Christian. Satan exclaims your time. Oh, I knew you were not here. And this is just part one. We are going to do part two. Relax. <laughs> when will you rise up? I'm waiting for people that say, I am rising up. I'm creating a revolution. I will post about God. My body will be used for God. Mm, sit down. This sitting down you are doing right now. That's the only job your bum is created for. On show, on video, on TV. Every time you dance, it has to shake. For what reason? You can attract your men by your twerking. But one day when you get into his house, he would want your brain to twerk. Oh, I can see the twerkers here. They are like, uh -uh, I'm not clapping for this one. Honestly, how even men, how have you lost your morals to actually get somebody who was twerking all over Twitter? And now this is one is your wife now. Even if it's forgiveness, forgive yourself first. It's just having fun. Mm -hmm. Where did you learn this? Before you know it, divorce is looking at you. Why? Because this did not work. But that twerked. And we don't feed our family by that twerking. We don't pay rent by that kind of move. It is to be here that pays the rent. The Bible says we are not of this world. We are passing through this world, but we are not of the world. We are in the world, but not of the world. But social media is drawing you to become of the world. And the nice thing is doing it, is doing it without telling you you are. So you keep believing you're a Christian. This is what is written Ichabod. Ichabod was born at the same time with Samuel. Samuel means God has head. Ichabod God means God has left. Imagine the same region, the same country, the same seasons, spiritual seasons, and one is, comes in and it's called Samuel. God hears. And another one, God doesn't hear. He's got mothers in the same region are calling their children different revelation. One is saying God is hearing. Another one, God is head. And God is living. What causes it to happen? Perception and revelation. When somebody already thinks they've arrived, it is going to be very, very difficult. Somebody asked me before I came, so this metaverse, oh, we are waiting for metaverse. I said, the biggest problem is what we're having is when I minister metaverse, some will listen, some won't. And most of the people that are addicted will never. It takes you to look at your phone like this and say, prophet said, I'm about to go back to my addiction. I don't need this. And there are some here, there are some here who have a social media to show church stuff. Then a social media to show. This is for work. This is for, you know, this church. Hey, Tofia Kwa. Hey. Why? And why is your social media private? 
Why do we need to ask you to get in? What are you hiding? Why is it for special people only? Why? No, they would trick me. Trick you? What are you doing? <laughs> they would trick you. Who are you? Are you the president of America? They are going to trick me. Ah, how special are you? Make your social media an altar call every day. Show them a piece of you that worships God. Show them something that they can look at and say, wait a minute. This man is born again. This woman is born again. Most people don't even know that before this metaverse came in, there was already a novel that was created around metaverse. Yeah. The same thing with what is happening around the world now. There is already a novel that talked about it, putting people in a location. People, you know, I wish I had um, left uh, Boris Johnson's father's uh, video there where, where he was on being interviewed. And he was asked, what if there is just a laboratory and it blasts off a bomb or a disease that comes in just before COVID, a disease that comes in and wipes and portion of the, of the population. Do you know what he said? He said, as a naturalist, I'll be very happy that at least some people are dead. It's there on video. And he started laughing. And all you think is these guys are okay. You are too trusting. Too trusting for no reason. They will put kids there joking and moving around. Kids there joking around. If you see me listen to most jokes, most jokes I listen to have a Bible inside or have a preacher inside and I don't listen when they are downplaying a preacher. I look at the sense behind it for me to even find it funny. But the world has, left, has been left with no jokes whatsoever that we pay to go and laugh. We wait for that unfunny little short guy. What's the name of this guy? What's the name? Trevor, uh, Tre uh, Kevin Hart. We have to pay. The guy's not funny at all. We have to pay. What you don't understand is, I looked at the history of that guy and, and all these uh, comedians. They have a whole team that writes jokes for them. Ten or fifty. So they are not thinking of those jokes. No. They have a team behind them that says, As, if you say this, they won't laugh. If you say this, then this is a punchline of the joke. Then you extend it like this. And you think they are funny. No. They're not. They know you. They are the saddest human beings. Remember the, the guy who did Miss Doubtfire? Robin Williams. Died of what? Stress. He killed himself. And yet every time you would send there, would, they would laugh. When Mr. Bean went to Harrow's, Alpha Head wanted what? Wanted him to act like Mr. Bean. He's like, uh-uh. I'm not. I'm coming here to shop. The guy's like, do what Mr. Bean does. <laughs> and the guy is not interested. It's his job. It's only you. I nearly said dummies. <laughs> Did I say that out loud? It's only you who don't realize that there is a problem here. Somebody is actually targeting you. You are the product. He's simply making jokes so that he gets money. He's not funny at all. Most comedians are divorced. The wife doesn't find them funny. <laughs> Yet somebody's wife finds them funny. <laughs> It's life. Why do you think murderers have got wives at home? And the wife has not been murdered. Liars will lie to everyone else except their wife. And the wife knows for sure this one is a scam artist. <laughs> not just con. It's a scam. He himself. Things are off. Have you not seen Black Lives Matter? 
They were telling you to march around the whole town. March, march. You are marching. You are black lives matter, black lives matter. Meanwhile, you are not even black yourself. <laughs> black lives matter, black lives matter. Everyone marching, removing statues. What you did not realize is they were there to change the presidency. When they managed to change the presidency, they then, now they are campaigning against the president. We wonder what is really taking place. Then before the elections, they gathered around New York to support gay people and lesbians. What has that to do with the skin? Then you go deeper and realize that the founders are gay. They're lesbians. Three. Three lesbians. Then you realize something behind the scene is being done and you have no idea. And it's social media that is giving you that sense. Now we have Oliver Twist. They want to turn him into a black guy. Honestly, he's not black. <laughs> I don't know if you're getting this. They want to turn him into a black guy. Why? Because black people. Now, now did you notice Bond, James Bond? Some people will watch James Bond. If you have money for James Bond. I mean, watch this. No, you, please, don't be. James Bond is white. We know this. We are okay with it. Now they killed him in the last film. Because there is a lady who is black that they now call Bond now. A black lady. Please, put a black man. We, we have a conversation. A black lady. They need women to rise. And what does the Bible say? It said that whore called Jezebel. It's not Jezzy. This is not a man. It's Jezebel. It's a woman. You're still not getting it. How on earth? You know, what they are doing is they are undermining you as black people. You don't see it. I understand we have Indians, we have white people here. They are undermining you as black people. They are telling you you're not intelligent enough to create your own James Bond. Yeah. So guess what? We will give you the, our James Bond. We will change our James Bond and put a black one so you can clip your hands. Then guess what? When they create James Bond, do you know what they do? They go to Americans, they, they go to Britain and say, this is British Secret Service. When they cre create triple X, they say, this is America, secret service. When they create black people, they have no country of reverence. They put Wakanda. There is no country like that. <laughs> and all of us are Wakanda. Wakanda, where is it? Zero. What is the mineral? Vibranium. Have you ever heard vibranium? Never. Zero. We have nothing. You are excited about a fiction. Things they know you will never get. There's no vibranium anywhere. And they say it's in Africa somewhere. When you enter, it changes things. Change. Why did they not take Namibia? Where was Zimbabwe? Why? Why did not, did they not take South Africa? Go to South Africa here. It looks way better than this jungle we see. Trust me, go into town and go like, oh my God. And guess what? Watch this. They never placed it as a, as a third world country, South Africa. And guess what? On, in all those stages, there is nothing called a second world country. And South Africa is not considered a first world and it's not considered a third world. And yet they said there's nothing we call second world. So that Africa will never feature anyway. When they want you to be successful, they put Wakanda. And they even put forever. Like you will be imaginary forever. <laughs> and every day on social media, they put Wakanda, Wakanda. Now there is part two now, Wakanda. Part two. And they take South African actors, Kenyan actors, so that they are in there and Wakanda. Not a real country. America is America. Britain is America when it's their heroes.
India, they will just sing. Musicals, musical. Music. If they put an Indian in a movie, they have to sing. They think that's what we like. If they put anyone from Arab, from Arab world, they have to be holding a bomb. <laughs> That's all we think Arabs are for. Why? Social media has get, gotten you hooked. They want you to see that, and they want you to see this, and they want you to see that. Nobody thinks I will go to Saudi Arabia and enjoy my holiday. They never. You are afraid of dying. You think you just get to the airport and go, Allah Akbar. <laughs> That's all you think right now. And you think you are so learned. There is somewhere you read it. No, you saw it on social media. They are so very nice, very nice people, very nice people that you'll be like, is this person an Arab? They are even better Muslims than you think of. Right now, if you get on the plane, just get on the plane like this and sit and turn around and see that. Uh, in the, by fire and by power, let this plane land, please. What's really taking place? A black man walks down the street and you see another black man. Oh. Even you, a black man, you will find a way like... <laughs> you, you, just, you, you, you don't know what will happen. You, you really have no idea. And you're also black. Because somebody told you knife crime done by black people. Yet the reality is we don't know who is reporting what. People are amplifying. Where are they even getting these guns? We have no country in Africa we know that makes guns, that invented guns. So who is giving these people guns that they are shooting each other? I was um, one of my sons who is here, not, not Ricky. <laughs> so that way we finish that one. It's not even Mark. He's sitting somewhere here. And he's like, Dad, I have a problem with my wife. I said, Is she black? He said, Yeah. I said, The problem is this you married a black woman thinking she will cook every day for you. And a black woman married you, thinking you cook. <laughs> These guys read somewhere that our black sisters, ah, oh, they are very submissive. Black sisters hate white people are the nicest civilized. It's half half, you know, 50-50. And they get it and realize this white man was looking for a black woman because she thought, he thought this one is going to be submissive and the black sister said, don't get it twisted. <laughs> Are you still flowing? We're about to finish. We're about to finish. He said, so what do I do? I said, uh-huh, cook, my friend, cook. <laughs> Definitely. Do you honestly think our black sisters are looking for a white brother just to get married? No. There are things they are running away from black brothers. Because I know black brothers have other advantages that we don't mention here, but... <laughs> you didn't hear me.
What I meant was, what I meant was, they come from 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 Africa that is sunshine and stuff like that's what I, that's what I'm talking about. But just imagine, I live that. There is another reason I'm coming to you for. Oh, I said something. Can I go deeper? You are very sinful people. Very dangerous people. I need to stop now. So you are going for value that is not value. What kind of value is validated by a like, a heart, and you think that's value? It's not value. What kind of value is it that authenticated by somebody comment, wow. So you say comment, they said wow on you. And these wows are found on ugly women, ugly men, ugly this one, short men, tall men, average men likes. They also get their wow. Everyone has got their kind of poison they like. So you finding a wow on yours doesn't mean you are nothing. You are anything. No. Just means you are something to the one you really appealed to. If you realize the value you have in God, you wouldn't wait for somebody to tell you, you are valuable, you are so beautiful, you are so nice. What do you honestly think when you open your DM and somebody has said hi? What do you think their next statement is? <laughs> have you ever asked yourself, what have I shown them for them to say hi? And you lie to yourself, it's because of your beauty. There is something, there is a way you manipulated your face. There is a way you con contorted your body to show them a certain kind of a hip that they said, hi. Where were they all this time before you posted this post? Where? What is the purpose of saying, hi, you look so beautiful? For what reason? Why should I know it? Did the mirror not show me? It's a short value. And those values are simply short-lived. And they mess up with your long-term goals. So what, what science have actually realized is most people who are on social media liking and liked, they mess up their medium goals and long-term goals. It might just be a joke of somebody dancing and you have to send it to someone. Look at this. Look at this. Ah, wow, that's so funny. You know, it's so funny. That time you are saying so funny. You don't realize that your mind has carried that image and sometimes it is played in, oh, I know that joke. When somebody gives you that joke, you say, oh, I know it. I've seen it where do you think that's coming from? From the brain that already has that video. Your own phone has got 32 gigs, 264. There is a memory capacity that should be used for business that you can be using up by stupid things. <laughs> that when your mind, now watch this, when your mind tells you, we now tend to business, your mind is too clogged with funny jokes that will never give you money. So you find yourself not interested in doing business. You like it. You desire it. You actually want to be a millionaire yourself. But guess what? Your mind can't do it. It can't calculate this and this because there is another information in there. There is another stupid person in there who is doing a joke and some stupid dances. <laughs> and you like it. Your own phone, you have to buy another one. You have to clear the old memory and put a new one. The Bible says, be ye transformed by the renewing. That means there is something in your mind that needs to come out for the new information to get in. <laughs> Turn to your neighbor say, you cannot, cannot. fill a cup that is already full. <laughs> Empty the cup first, <laughs> put new contents. 
The Bible says their conscience seared with the hot iron, molested by demons. They still think you are you. You're not you. You just need to leave me the way I am. Uh uh-uh. uh. This is not you. There is another thing that is inside that we're trying to deal with so that the real you can come out. This one is captured. If you knew who you were, you wouldn't do the things you do. You wouldn't. You wouldn't. Look at the world now. Do you know how Kim Kardashian came into popularity? It's a sex tape. The person who appeared on the sex tape, I think, I think attended one of our newest conference, Ray J. How did he not succeed more than Kim? It seems as if the more embarrassing you make your sex tape, the more popular you become. It is the only world that rewards prostitutes. See that with a disease or with money or death. You look at our kids, you wonder, do you even know the value of what you have? Some are here. And some have asked this same question. What should I do? And I look at the posts now. They look more and more revealing than before. Why? Because the moment they posted that revealing photo, more people liked it. So the skirts are becoming shorter and shorter and shorter. If you have that desire, that means your face itself is not more appealing than your leg. That says a lot. A leg is just one organism like this. A face has eyes, eyebrows, nose, everything. And it's not as appealing as one straight leg. You need to plastic surgery if you're like that. <laughs> Honestly, your leg should not be as appealing as your face. We are in a generation that is a lot of moral decadence. I was talking to somebody that is close to me and I said, sex is not, a, is not proof of freedom. Turn to your neighbor. Say, sex is not proof of freedom. It is not a liberating act. It is a binding act. You are bound to the one you, 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 you're sexually active with. You are bound. It's a spiritual activity. You are bound. Now that person is connected to you forever until you remove them from your head. And you don't eject them by... I eject them. Hey. It's an exercise in futility. If you say, I reject them, they're no longer in there. I don't care anymore. Uh uh-uh. uh. It's a continuous telling yourself, they were bad for me. This is wrong. I'm going for right things. This is wrong. Continuously telling it to yourself until your mind is renewed. Otherwise, it will keep popping up. Ladies and gentlemen, the metaphors interferes with your life. It interferes with your life. Just imagine posting pictures. That's it. And they realize now that there is a man, a visual. So they change from there and now they are giving you more time to do what? To post videos. Used to be like 59 seconds, right? 15 seconds best. Now it is gone now. You can post whatever. You can post one hour now. IGTV. Press. One hour. Of doing whatever you like. Spin. Move. Dance. 
twerk, all these things. Now, because they know we are visual, we need to see it. So consistently, we are looking at it like this. Look for another video. Press another video. Press another video. And your whole day is spent looking at videos. And you think you are relaxed. I'm just relaxing at home, just on IG, just, just, just looking at things. Which things? Ah, some funny videos. Ah, nothing. At the end of the year, how much money did you make? Ah, life is very difficult. Mm. <laughs> Britain is difficult. <laughs> how are millionaires becoming millionaires in Britain? COVID, eh? <laughs> COVID caused a lot of problems. I can tell you, in my company, all right, or companies, we made more money during COVID than any other time, and we're not selling PPEs. <laughs> yeah. Some of you here are a result of us preaching during COVID. We were on it. We were the first, among the first preachers to preach on, um, there was some Periscope. Did a conference. That we didn't even know how to do it. We just said conference on Periscope before we even broadcast on it. We didn't even know it was, it was possible. The first time it was launched, we were there. Telling the world about this gospel. We're not looking for money. This Instagram. Did I say don't post? Post every day, but post about Christ. Yeah. And some of you did not hear me, and I said there are maybe three minutes left. Uh, some of you did not even hear me. You got the post wearing some miniskirt going like Jesus is alive. <laughs> like may he strike you by thunder now. Because he's alive. Honestly. So it's not what you post there. It's the sense of what you're doing. Is there a connection between this photo and this thing? Mm. See, I'm blessed that we have mature people in this ministry. The youth that side are just going like... Some are like, what can you do? You know, you are older than us. Uh, the reality is I've got over a million followers on Facebook. Almost half a million on Instagram. So I've got more followers than you. And I know what to do with them. Listen to this. God so loved the world. Do you notice? God loved the world, right? And the Bible says, after God loved the world, the Bible says it this way. It says, if you love the world, you are an enemy of God. Uh -uh. But you love the world. I'm loving the world and I'm an enemy. How? Because whatever you love, you give something. God so loved, he gave Christ. You so loved the world, you started clubbing. If you love the world, give it Christ. How many here are parents? If you have a child, or well, just raise your hand if you have a child. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Monitor them. Let them hate you for the rest of their lives. It's okay. In fact, I will have a lesson. Just a lesson with the parents, all the parents, and tell you how to hack the... Real hacking. Your child is sleeping, you just take the phone. I tell you how to do it. Everything that is on your screen is exactly what is on their screen. You will know everything. And they will not have an idea. Even if they go wherever, they will not have an idea you have it. There is a system you can load on their system and delete after. You can give them their phone like this. They don't even know it was loaded. Every time some, they call, you know. nonsense we are losing a generation by stupidity we think it's civilization to allow them to do what they like no in my house they are safe people do what they like hey. raising dissidents and when you walk you are the person that people castigate and say uh -huh. the mother of that prostitute 
the father of that drug dealer. And you're moving around thinking you're safe, you're not. Let's raise a generation that will worship God, that is not programmed. I know you are hearing me. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Listen to me, people. You have value. I said you have value. If Christ died for you, you have more value than you think you have. You are special. I said you are special. I said you are special. And all the men here, you have purpose on earth. Don't listen to what the media is saying. Social media has created an area where masculinity is removed from men. So men are afraid of becoming men. We are now telling women to want jobs that men do. So we are leaving the femininity of women and say, leave this and look for what a man likes. And then we tell them you don't need a man. Have you noticed that women are now calling themselves king? Yeah. It's a trend, it's trending now. Oh, she's kinging. It's no longer queen. Why? Because if I say queen, I rely on a man. So women would rather stand toe to toe with their husbands in arguments. Why? Because we are all the same. I also have rights. From where? Where do you get them? Women don't have rights. They have women's rights. Men don't have rights. They have men's rights. And then there is Christian rights. So now you wonder why we don't have marriages now in the Christian age. Why? Simple. The man is chosen to listen and be like the woman. Because masculinity has been removed. Most of you have no idea that when you buy your techies from, from wherever shop you buy, there is something called estrogen that has been put inside. That is the hormone that is opposed to Testosterone simply means is the men we have now are at least over 1,000 times less than the men we used to have. Why? Because estrogen has been introduced in foods. So you have more female hormones than male hormones. So we have more people becoming gays and lesbians now. And you think it's because they were born like that. Their argument is so valid that they were born like that because the food was introduced to them while they are in the womb. So I have no idea now what's happening. They come out and they eat food that is estrogen and they are men and they have become feminine in nature. You see people just moving kind of anyhow. You wonder why are you moving like this? Why have you lost this? And the Bible actually tells you that it is wrong for a man to act like a woman. And men and women are wondering why are we not having men marrying us. The men are no longer there. They're just like you. They're women too. <laughs> this is the reason why you find men looking for women who are rich and they're broke. Moving from one rich woman to another rich woman to another rich woman. Squandering women's money. You get into the house and the father is sitting so far like this changing channels. And the woman is coming from work, opening, Mama, you are back. Ah. <laughs> I'm just taking care of the kids. You, you are taking care of the kids. A man taking care of the kids. You are a nanny at home. There is no reason. Yes, you can be a nanny while you have your company opening. Take care of your kids. That's okay. But to say you have no job, not one. Your job is to sit at home. Cook for the woman who has gone to work. And the Bible says if a man does not provide for his own family, he has lost the faith. In other words, you're no longer a Christian. Hey. And then he goes further. He says you are worse than an infidel. 
for those who don't, un who don't understand an infidel, is like you are like a terrorist. <laughs> we have men that don't bring nothing home. No food, nothing, no money at the end of the month. Zero. Just going for the woman with money. The car you drive at home belongs to the woman. You are not a man. You are really not a man. Real men take charge. That's it. Your only men would be seen in the bedroom. Or when you want to shout at that woman, that's all you see. You want to control, yeah, I am the leader of this home. Well, can you lead with your money at least, at least one month? Oh, I can tell men are not talking. I am here. <laughs> Whatever you sponsor, you control. Amen. Now you want to control this woman. Have you, you have never bought anything, not one dress. If we get into your wife's wardrobe right today, let's close it right now. Will we find a new dress somewhere? Some, maybe something, even the Spirit of God led you one night to just buy an ugly one. No. All the clothes that are in there belong to your... She's the one who bought them. But it's my money. Which one? She also goes to work. And sometimes it ends more than you. And you are still... I, I'm, I'm, I'm a man. I'm bigger than you. Where? I'm here to suggest that if you earn more than your men, you are the men. whether your man has to borrow to get more money than you. It's okay. As long as he brings more money home than you. You can't bring nothing home and tell me you are the man. From where? If a man does not provide for his own family, he is worse than an infidel. He has lost the faith. This man, if he doesn't earn more than you, you should see him with a pick, a shovel. You should see him on the computer trying to make it. At least you see the potential. Not nothing. There's no potential. Ah, I don't have time, you know, for any business. Uh -uh. Let me see you go to work somewhere. Try to make money somewhere extra beyond what you are making. Let me know when we need 2,000 here and when we don't have anything. You will know how to create it. Yes, I might earn more than you, but you, when we are in trouble, you get us out. I went to hell, written by Hubert Angel, the author of the bestseller, Spiritual Warfare. This book is an experiential account of the true nature and existence of hell. Prophet Hubert Angel was afforded visitations to hell by God and was commanded to let the world know the reality of hell and to give a stark reminder to the world to choose life and prepare for eternity. Get a copy of this sobering book, I Went to Hell, from www.hubertangel.org.
of a man that the wife would just go, <coughs> what did you say, mama? <laughs> Even a cough would surprise him. Then you know something is off here. We have lost masculinity. And the disadvantage always falls on our women. You demand your men to lose masculinity. You will lose the advantages of his masculinity. Men were created with an ability to rule to take charge, and above all, to provide. This is the reason there was a garden of Eden in Adam before Eve. Eve was introduced only to Adam after Adam had a job. I don't want to go deep on that. <laughs> nah, I don't want time. Oh, you look so wonderful. Oh, wow. You look so beautiful. Wow. Look at your legs. Look at. Oh, thank you so much. No. Before you finish, do you have a job? <laughs> because if you don't have a job, baby, how are you able to handle this? How? 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 <laughs> How will you take care of this? We need to finish this service. What on earth? What on earth are you doing, daughters? I know I'm going to go deep on, on these brothers, but, but what on earth do you do? That you find a person whose salary is like yours. It is not something, it won't go down well with Christians. People will take this clip, run it around the world. Wow, look at this. He's saying this, he's saying this. I say it, it. So what? Uh, and I'm not here to be liked. No way. Because I know there's some people who like commenting. Mm, rubbish. <laughs> Especially broke people. Ah, this is the only time they have. But if Adam had a job before Eve, it was good for God to provide a job to Adam before there was any marriage. What if I, I sense potential in the men? Hey. <laughs> Are you a prophet now? <laughs> I sense potential. All the jobless men are just like, ah. <laughs> you can't rely on potential. Because potential can be five years, the man is saying, I, I, but I saw potential. Six years, potential. Seven years, potential. That guy, the moment he has the money, the way he will treat you. Let me explain. Have you noticed those with ugly wives, the ones I'm talking to now? I'm waiting for one to go, hallelujah. <laughs> have you noticed that the type of your choices changes when you have money? That's why I believe men of God that have married beautiful wives before they started their churches. So it's okay now because at least you witnessed something. There was something, there was choice in you. Now this thing where a choir leader is taken from the church by the pastor because she looks beautiful is because money has been introduced in the pocket of the pastor. So now his view is now different. Now maybe they didn't get that. Let me just explain to you my own history. There was a woman, very beautiful, at our high school, boarding school. Very beautiful. Oh, 
Everyone was like, if I can get this woman, God himself. You know, you saw that, 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 that Nigerian who said, God, if you give me this woman, God bless you, God. <laughs> it's like God needs to be blessed by God. <laughs> Everyone who said, this one is the most beautiful woman ever. The whole school was missed that school. One day, um, even me, I agreed that I was the most beautiful woman at the school. No, not at the school. Maybe in the world, who, who knows? That is just your world. That is there. I finished. I'm now in money spot. I'm flying from Zimbabwe to go to America. I gained a little bit of money after my college in Salford, at Salford. And I'm passing by this, you know, check-in. I look at this ugly woman holding our passports. I said, oh, Oh, oh. This is the most beautiful. <laughs> this was the most beautiful woman on earth at that time. What has changed? Are they my eyes? No, quality in me had changed. I had enough money to clean my lenses. You're getting it now. Same with we, you women here. You had men that you thought were the most handsome. Until your quality changed. Now you dress well. You clean up. You do this. You suddenly, it's, it's, nobody comes to you and says, hey, wake up please. Now you, have, now you see better. No, you, your quality changes, you see quality. Since you came to this country, from Chechecheche, from Silobela, from um, Chabalala, South Africa, uh -huh. from Muzuzu, Malawi, you went there and you went like, hey, hey. Why are we backward like this? Things you looked at and thought, wow. We're no longer wow. You experience a certain level of quality. So now things have changed. So when you grow in money, quality changes. So this man you are marrying for quality purposes, for potential purposes. The moment they have money, money does not change people. It amplifies their character. It exposes them. So if your man right now is broke and you married them broke and they still don't have money, trust me, you, you don't know the man you married. Give him a little bit of money. He will leave you sitting there. And you wonder what happened. No, nothing happened. Money happened. It's exposing the person's character now. Now they are there seeing beauty where they should not have seen beauty. Money exposes character. The person you have, if they are broke, you have not tested who they are. You realize, sooner or later you realize. Give somebody money and you think you've never seen them in your life. There are people you know, you were friends until they got money. And you think they are now really showing off. They are not. This is exactly what they were like. But there was nothing to reveal their character. Now hear this. Imagine when you take it and put it on social media. And you see a person showing a certain level of excellency. Then you are put in one room with them. For longer you realize, oh, this is the person I thought uh, had quality. Now they are doing crazy stuff. They are no longer worried about you are there or not. They bep on the wrong tire, the wrong time. Breathe you in the wrong direction. Some people are getting it. And you are thinking, why? I told you of a brother who married a person because she could sing. One reason only, singing. I'll marry you, my wife. One day you woke up, looked at his wife and go, hey, around 3 a.m. He said, baby, baby, sing for me. <laughs> and he's saying, he said, okay, it's okay. Reasons should change today. You should shift your life. 
and go for something that is better. Raise your hands and begin to pray that I'm not captured, I'm not reprogrammed, I'm not programmed by anything. Begin to pray. Begin to pray wherever you are. I want to see you pray and I want to hear your voice. Pray nunga valusia talas. Right now, right now, right now, right now. Jesukia mo. Prakavosia kele do kie. Engrita kados. Zizu kabayanke. Manzute ya monkle antafuri ya saligos. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for these that have heard your message that there is a plan by the enemy to change them from the spiritual world to follow the natural world. But when the natural world failed, the devil planned another universe, a metaverse, a death trip, where the attention of our children will be 100% there and no longer on soul winning. Where even the Bible will become obsolete to people because they think theirs is online. I decree and declare now around the world and for these that are here that these will remain solid. That from right this minute, they have one social media to talk about Christ. It doesn't matter how beautiful they look, how handsome they look, it will be Jesus Christ from now onwards. In Jesus' mighty name. Listen, if people don't like your post about Jesus Christ, they don't like you. Because the Bible says you are not your own. You are not your own. Why are you friends with my enemies? Why would you be friends with my enemies? For what reason? Now, if you know this one is an enemy of God, why follow that person? Notice here what the scriptures are saying. If the scriptures are telling you this is an enemy of God, if a prophet has already declared this one is an enemy of God, why am I their friend? That means I am actually validating that you are right and God is wrong. And when I come to God and say, God, be with me, God is like, uh-uh, you're an enemy of my friends. And a friend of my enemies. The Bible says, whosoever is joined to an halot has become a halot. Notice here, it seems as if there is a power over a halot to change a Christian than a Christian to change a halot. Because if I'm a Christian and I join myself to a prostitute, that prostitute does not become Christian. It's me who becomes a prostitute. Yet I have the power over the prostitute. How does it happen? A Christian meets with a halot and they become a halot. No, it should be a halot becoming a Christian. But it means a halot has the power to change you. You have no idea the power of the enemy to change you. Most people think they are strong. We're very strong. No, I'll never be moved. You are easily moved because you're programmed without knowing. And the devil knows your weaknesses. He has known the weaknesses of your parents from beginning. Your parents' parents. But today is that last day. Amen. I said today is that last day. Amen. Today is that last day. You only need one social media, one Instagram, one Facebook, one Twitter account. You don't need nonsense. And where you show your beauty there, but show them Christ's word. But no, but you know, what I'm doing is I'm just doing one for business. Why is your first day? Are you selling yourself? If you're selling orange, oranges, put oranges there. If you're selling heaters, put heaters. Why, why do you need to be there? Then you realize it has gone to self-centeredness. But God is alive. Amen. And we caught the devil before he caught you. Amen. And some of you, we have returned you to the place of origin. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let's clap hands for Jesus. Let's clap hands for Jesus.
Brother Eddie Ende. Brother, come Let's here. Go. You. Yes, you. Yeah. You see, if I don't prophesy to this man here, and I don't even need to talk about his name or anything, but the reason I went there was simple. Because I saw you preparing to write a letter. Huh? Yes. You were writing a suicide letter. Hey. Yes. It was the whole week. It's true. Jesus. Pazumando vele kilo na atletes. Do you see? I'm still pulling. He doesn't even see me, and he's falling. There is an atmosphere of Jesus. There's an atmosphere of Jesus. Atmosphere of Jesus. Atmosphere of Jesus. Let's go. There's an atmosphere. There's an atmosphere of Jesus. Atmosphere of Jesus, atmosphere of Jesus. There's a nothing. Like nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. No disease is curable. There's a atmosphere. There's a atmosphere. But nothing is impossible. I know just here. Jesus. How, how are you feeling, brother? I feel amazing. Wow. This whole week, this whole week, I've been, I've been yeah. getting attacked. And last time, he, Grandpa prophesied and said, your relationship with your father will go back. And he went back, and since this whole week, it's like something been saying, You're go you have to die, you have to die. And then I've been made homeless, I have nowhere to stay. And I asked, why? My car stopped, and it, it, I don't understand. Now I'm free. I feel, I feel this big thing. I feel things. We're in the atmosphere of Jesus. The atmosphere of Jesus. Hallelujah. We're in the atmosphere of Jesus. We're in the atmosphere of Come home and come. I don't, I'm not prophesying. I'm just want to help you. Come here. Come here. God is about to do something over your life. It's a thing that will begin to take place. Simple and straightforward. Your desire, even when you are younger than this, you desire to be so close, so close to the Lord, so close to the Lord. In fact, at one time you were close, then something just left. 
and now you are desiring that same desire again. Something. You want to be close to the Lord. You're already making the breakthrough. You are the only one who thinks you're not close to Christ. Christ is telling me you are close to him. Amen. <laughs> so, how many years have you been here? How many months, how many days have you been in this church? Uh, first time. First time. Oh, with my sister. First you know, time. Where is your tattoo with the butterfly? All right. Now listen. As you see it here, I'm taking to a place like Black, 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 like Tunnel. Like Black or Tunnel. And I'm seeing O2. And in that place, like Greenwich. Greenwich somewhere. Where, where is the parlor that did this? I can't recall the name. It was but it's where land. Is it? Where is it located? Uh, the place you got the tattoo. Which area? It was East London. It wasn't far from you, was it? Hey! Listen to me now. You see that fly, uh, butterfly there? This is you. The only reason I saw this is because God said, I'm transforming you. You are in the process of transforming. So some things are not going to be difficult. You are turning into a caterpillar. From a caterpillar, you are removing the cocoon. You get into a caterpillar stage. Then you start flying. And your mind is that pain that happens in that transformation. You think it's you being far from the Lord. The Lord said, no. I'm even closer to you than you think you are. Than we think I am. So something is happening over your life. And God is about to do anything and God is healing everything concerning you. Concerning your heart, concerning everything. God is healing you now in the name of Jesus. Something is happening. Stand here. Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. It's for you. Your life is being transformed as I speak. The reason why I came to you was because God is saying, look at this woman. I'm about to change her and I'm changing her. She's going through shifts in the spirit and she thinks I'm not there. He is closer. You were praying. Yes, to be seeked out. Wow. She said, I prayed that you would pick me. And here there is. Your prayer is being answered already. Now just imagine, you think God doesn't hear you. He prayed. I'm not even doing prophecy now. I said 5.30. And I'm, doing, I'm breaking my own rules to come to you. So God heard you. You're welcome. Thank you so much. God bless you. Ratule Mangrovia. Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. Stand there. A good news world with Hubert Angel, provoking a reaction and always worth hearing.